Hello friends, it's Kayla. I have had a couple like low energy weeks. Um, I've been reading, I've been filming a little bit, but I just feel like this video is not completely cohesive. So I haven't done this in a while, but I'm gonna walk you through my vlog. Um, I didn't even film an intro, so here we are. A couple months ago, I filmed this video where I went through every short story collection I've ever read from a collection of authors. And I talked about all the stories that I gave five stars and who those authors were. Um, I was also left a comment where somebody was like, I wish that you created like a spreadsheet so we could see visually what authors you read from the most and have given the most five stars to. And of course, being a stats loving girl, I have created that. And I think that'll help explain what the purpose of this vlog was because there's three different things that I was doing within it and none of them are really connected. And all of this was decided in the moment while I was filming this. I would come across short stories and I'd be like, oh, I should reread that. It's been so long. Or I'd say like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've read a bunch of five stars from this author and I've never read a novel from them. Or hey, this author I've read a couple short stories from and I've read a couple novels I haven't liked. I should pick up more of their short stories and read those. So all of these things kind of happened within this vlog. First, I guess, let's just pull up the spreadsheet. So what I did here is I put all of the short story collections that I've read and then I listed all of the authors. At one point I stopped listing all of the authors and I only listed authors that I either gave five stars or I've read more than one anthology from because I was trying to learn certain things from the spreadsheet. So there's basically two chunks going on. There's this entire area here and then you can see a black dividing line and then this is something else. So the top section here is all authors that I have given five stars to a short story. And I listed here um, the total amount of short stories I've read from them. So even if I've only read one, I included them here because it was relevant enough because they have had a five star. Um, that's what these indicate. The little star means five star. Um, the little faded one just means they had a story in that collection. So you can see at the top, the author that I've read the most um, short stories from is Anna Marie McLemore. And the purpose of this vlog was to read from authors that I haven't read from outside of a short story. So as you can see, I've read six short stories from them, but I've also read six novels from them. Like they are a favorite author of mine already. Meanwhile, the next on my list, Dahlia Adler, I have read five short stories from, and three of them have been five stars, which is a super high ratio, but I haven't read a single full length novel from her. Then you can see the next chunk of authors. We've got E.B. Zaboy, Brandy Colbert, um, Danielle Clayton, Rebecca Roanhorse, um, Justina Ireland, Matt de la Pena, Victoria Schwab, SK Ali, etc, etc. And those authors I have all read a book from. It doesn't mean that it was a favorite and like even with Anna Marie Milkemore, it doesn't mean that all of the books that I read of those six were favorites. This is just the numbers. And then from here you can see there's a bunch of authors who I haven't read a novel from yet, but I've read one or two short stories from them and I've given them at least one five star. So those are all you know, you can see they're all here. <laughs> and I talked through all of these authors in that original video that I did and talked through the books that they have out, asked questions if you think I would enjoy one. And I really took your comments into account. So there's a couple authors here um, that I decided to read from further in this video. And then this section at the bottom is authors that I have yet to give a five star to a short story that I have read from them at least twice. So we've got like Tessa Grattan, Renee Adier, um, who might be authors that I've read novels from, who I've enjoyed stuff from, but I haven't given any short stories five stars. So with all of that covered, I read three novels from authors that I had yet to read a novel from. I read a short story collection from an author that I've given five stars to their short stories. And then I read a selection of not full anthologies, but I picked out stories from here to read from authors that I've previously given five stars to their short stories. So all of that is to come in this vlog, but the very first thing that I did is throughout making that first video, I talked about stories that I should reread. And that wasn't done with any statistics in mind. It was just ones that I was coming across and I was like, this was seven years ago, or this is an author that I haven't liked since. Like, would I still like it if I went back? And this wasn't based on stats, just vibes. So the first thing that I picked up is Summer Days and Summer Nights. These are all summer love stories. And the first one is Head Scales Tongue Tail by Lee Bardugo. This absolutely remained a five star for me, even though it's not like the 
most like wild thing ever. I find that when I rate short stories five stars, it's either because I'm impressed that they managed to like pull off some twist or some reveal in such a short um, time period or in such a short number of pages rather, or it's just a story that I've never read before. And so I find that like very cool. This one doesn't really fit into either of those categories. You know, it's a summer love story that takes place near the water and there's obviously a creature involved. So I feel like it's pretty straightforward what the story is going to be. Though with a lot of collections, I find that the synopsis will say things like, um, in this collection, there's a story of a creature and a girl. In Stephanie Perkins story we're following this and this but the synopsis of summer days and summer nights it doesn't give away like what any of the stories are about so I would never want to spoil anything but it feels like a pretty familiar story and I don't know if that's because I've read it before like literally read the story before or if the first time I read it I was also like yeah that's the exact story I was expecting and I think it was beautifully done like Leigh Bardugo has such a stunning writing style and the way that she told this story was perfect so it's remaining a five star though it's not one of those stories that I would say should be its own like standalone book it doesn't have that big of an impact and I don't know that I would put it in a collection of like my all-time favorite short stories that I would recommend to the general public. After that, Inertia by Veronica Roth really appealed to me, so I reread that one. This was so good, I'm keeping my five star. Um, it's so interesting to me though, how this looks like such a contemporary summer love story, or collection of stories, and like it, it is kind of, but that was very sci-fi, and the one from Lee Bardugo was very fantastical. Still set in the real world, but like that's just not the vibe that this gives it looks so much more appropriate in this collection than this collection it gave me very like sequoia nagamatsu kate folk vibes in fact i just reserved this from the library because i want to read the other like five novellas that are in there it's not the most groundbreaking short story i've ever read it reminded me a lot of the dynamic between tris and four which side note i do think i need to read reread Divergent like or the whole series at some point because I have such fond memories of that but today is it's not the day for that um this was this idea of this moment at the end of someone's life the last visitation where they can bring you into their mind um, and you can experience memories together and it's just such a fascinating idea maybe it's because I've also been re-watching Vampire Diaries this week and I just got to the episode um where Damon put a certain memory in somebody's mind when they were dying and it's just such a beautiful concept to me but also this anthology looks so much lighter than it is because that was a heavy story um and i was really just run over with a hit by a truck with um why the story did something for me the first time around and equally did it this time um, the main character is dealing with a lot. There's a lot of conversations around grief and self-harm and I wasn't expecting it, even though obviously I've read it before. And then from there, I was just vlogging throughout my entire day, taking you everywhere with me. And next I picked up A Tyranny of Petticoats. Uh, this is all historical stories. And when I was filming the video, I came across a five-star for Marissa Meyer, which I was really surprised by. So I decided to reread this one which is set in 1877 Deadwood, Dakota territory, and it's called Gold in the Roots of the Grass. Not only did I not really like that <laughs> the second time around, but I don't remember it. Um, but I wrote individual reviews for these ones, so let's see what my thoughts were. Right now, my thoughts are, it was kind of boring. I think maybe I was really into like psychic kind of stories, and there was this interesting idea of her like, um connecting to ghosts but pretending she's pretending to be a shaman and she said she like put on a fake chinese accent or exaggerated her accent i don't really know what the vibe was and i just like googled marissa meyer and i always thought that she was asian and i just i guess assumed that cinder was like an own voices um sci-fi series but it doesn't seem to be i don't know some of the language in that just made me uncomfortable and also it was like, I wouldn't say it was like the pace was poor. I just don't feel like it was that interesting, I guess. So 
let me scroll this was an excellent and fast-paced story about gold miners and communicating with ghosts on their behalf Sun Fei Yen was an interesting main character that I could see driving a full novel, but it also felt perfectly complete as a short. That's all I said. Um, I disagree. I think the concept could definitely carry a book, and I have since read books in this kind of vein. And I actually have a good amount of books on my TBR in this vein. Um, but none of the characters were that interesting to me. So, interesting. I think I would give it like honestly like a two and a half. Rereading all of these was definitely interesting because it made me even more aware of the authors that I like and don't like and like want to read from now. And we're actually gonna have to do some adjusting to the spreadsheet if, if we want to. Uh, next I picked up Toil and Trouble which is a witchy anthology and I read or reread rather The Truth About Queenie by Brandy Colbert. I definitely have nothing negative to say about the Brandy Colbert but I wouldn't call it a five star probably a four as uh, a contemporary kind of story about a girl who's in love with her best friend um, but then he gets a girlfriend and she thinks that she has magic our main character but she's never really used it and so an opportunity presents itself to do that um, and she has to kind of choose between if she wants to be selfish or if she wants to support her friend and I think there's a good message Obviously, I have to keep in mind that these stories, the majority of these short stories are for teens. And for that reason, I appreciate the message and I think that it was a decent story. Um, definitely not super memorable. But yeah, my feelings on that story pretty much align with most of the Brandy Colbert that I read. Then it was on to Hungry Hearts, an anthology all about food and culture. And I reread the story by Phoebe North called Bloom. My rereads are really not going well. So this one, I think it's that all of the stories are kind of connected as in they all take place um, in this like food market or just street full of restaurants rather and they are all kind of connected like the stories reference each other so the one I was just reading is about a girl who she has a restaurant with her dad but then she's going on a date with this guy and they go to one of the other restaurants nearby and then she also has a best friend who is in another one of the restaurants. They're not tied together as in plot, but I feel like this is the type of anthology you wouldn't read out of order. Like it's not ideal to pick and choose one story that you wanna read. The best experience is reading it as intended all in a row. So all of the connections like tie into story to story. So obviously this was one of my favorites of all of them, but it's because I read them all together that I think it had the impact that it did. I don't know what I would rate it now. It really didn't do much for me. So I feel like probably a three. And I don't have a review of this one. So I can't tell you what I was thinking at the time. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was just okay. Anyway, cheers. Yum. It seems kind of unfair to update the spreadsheet. Like sure, I guess we're taking Phoebe North and Marissa Meyer off the list now, but I only reread their stories. If I reread the entire anthology, which I have no interest in really doing, then maybe multiple people would leave or be added. Obviously my reading taste has changed in some ways over the last seven years, shocking. What hasn't changed though is my thoughts on the short stories in one of my favorite anthologies, Love Beyond Body Space and Time. The first one I reread was from Darcy Little Badger. It was so fun returning to Darcy Little Badger's writing. And this is so different from the novels I've read from her. This is like super in space on a spaceship and she's a veterinarian and they have to wake her up early because all of the dogs on the ship have also woken up for some reason. And so now they need somebody to care for them because they're like on a space travel mission and there's a bunch of people and a bunch of animals and they're just like going to another place but it takes a long time to get there and so they're all put to sleep and she wakes up you know prematurely which is a pretty standard intro to a sci-fi story but her having to like care for these dogs and make them listen to her i just really loved that vibe and i gave it five stars and then it was on to valedictorian at the starview motel by Nathan Adler. And this was really fun because the story was set on Ghost Lake. And I wonder if it's gonna be a story in here, like if this story got put in here amongst 12 others, or if this is the story that inspired this. This took place over kind of one night and it's just about a girl um, learning about herself and learning about the lake. And again, five stars. 
totally holds up. Next, I decided to read some from one of the oldest short story collections I've ever read, Because You Love to Hate Me, Tales of Villainy. First up was Shirley and Jim by Susan Dennard, who I haven't read from since. And then I followed that up with Death Knell by Victoria Schwab, who I've read from plenty since. Because You Love to Hate Me is so interesting because I just want to know the behind the scenes and I don't know anybody that can answer me at this point. But like the booktubers who were asked to participate in this, they gave a prompt to each of these authors. And I just want to know, did they give them one prompt? Is that true? Or did they have to give the author like three different prompts? Or did the author offer some prompts and the booktuber chose one of those? Because like, how, how could you just ask somebody to give an author a prompt for a story and they just like have to write it? I understand the concept and that it's a creative writing kind of project, but like what if they hated the prompt? What happens then? For Susan Dennard's, the story is called Shirley and Jim, and it's basically about if Sherlock and Moriarty were in love and met as a boy and a girl and had this chess game together. Um, it's incredible, like five stars, absolutely. And the prompt that she was given is just a young Moriarty. And that totally makes sense, like easy, kind of prompt. Um, and then I went on to read the one from V.E. Schwab or Victoria Schwab, which was called Death Knell. And the prompt that she got is just much more involved. Hades wakes up after being unconscious at the bottom of a well in Ireland. Like, how do you come up with that? <laughs> it's just so specific. It feels like something the Victoria Schwab would have come. Like, don't you think, doesn't it feel like the author had three ideas and she was like, pick one that you like. But then how did another author just get a young Moriarty? You know what I mean? But then I look at the one for April Genevieve to Holke and the prompt is Beauty and the Beast, Suitor's Revenge. And that very much feels like something that Whitney would come up with. <laughs> anyway, Death Knell is one of my favorite short stories of all time absolutely um this is the reason that i went on to read more victoria schwab like this was fantastic and it was about a girl uh it was about a girl trying to avoid death basically and that really is i'm realizing one of my favorite things when you get to read from death's point of view like this is something i feel like people already know about me but i need to fully acknowledge i love hearing from death i love hearing about death i love the idea of this girl making death feel alive for the first time like as a character death death being personified is so great and the end of this and like the full circle moment oh it was just as good the second time around and then yeah we had hide and seek by megan shepherd which i'm technically taking off my list of five stars. I don't know that I'm sticking with my five stars for this. It feels more like a four, but it was still really good. And it's a girl who is playing a survival game with death. And she's basically like death has come for her. And she's she has the opportunity to play a game. And she's like, let's play hide and seek. And she has 24 hours to stay away from death. So it's kind of like Final Destination vibes. Reading it directly after Victoria Schwab's did it a bit of a disservice um, because it didn't have the same impact, but it was still a super well done story. But I do think though, I don't plan to pick up her YA stuff. She recently came out with an adult novel that I think I'm gonna pick up. The one thing I didn't talk about for some reason, because I already had 10 stories, I guess, but I really wanted to reread the Scott Lynch that was in here. This is Rogues, because I had to decide if I wanted to read more short stories from him, because there's one in the Book of Swords and one in the Book of Magic. The one in here is called A Year and a Day in the Old Theradane, and I gave it five stars. I didn't vlog it, but it's this fantastical story about thieves 
and um, a group of people tasked with completing something impossible and it was just so much fun this group of characters were all so vivid and interesting and I'm really glad I liked it but before we get into the short stories that I read from authors I've already established that I like I read some novels so first up I had to make this super important decision I just realized that whatever book I read next is gonna be my 200th book of the year my 196 my 197th, my 198th, and my 199th, none of them were five stars. And I feel it imperative to have a win for this point in the year. The easiest one on the list was The Hunger by Alma Katsu because I've been interested in a lot of her books before. I think she's been on the Goodreads Awards. I've seen her a lot and I hadn't even realized that I'd read a short story from her until I made that video. And this is also about, I can't really remember. I think this is about vampires. Maybe it was zombies. Anyway, someone's hungry and I'm gonna read that. And then based on your feedback, you very kindly told me that you didn't think that Rin Chapeco was gonna be for me at least their older YA stuff but that they had this kind of vampire story it's adult it's brand new so yes I went and picked it up and then the easiest one for me to pick was the number one author that I have read the most short stories from and given the highest ratings of anyone that I have yet to read coming in at the very top was Dahlia Adler and I've never read a full-length book from her so this is cool for the summer this is I don't know like a bisexual rom-com cannibals it was um cannibals that the story was about the first chapter and the prologue got me to about 15 pages in and it introduced me to what i think is probably must be a well-known story in the states about the donner party which is a group of settlers um, who engaged in cannibalism because they had a hard time surviving the winter when they were traveling between different parts of the country. The prologue gave me a brief kind of intro to that and then the first chapter was just introducing me to a couple characters and why they've decided to like go off trail and what's going to lead to, I'm sure the whole book is going to be that story of a reimagining or a retelling inspired by the Donner Party. And it was kind of ominous, like not just the situation that I can imagine they're going to be in soon, but we have a character who's like, I left behind everything that I knew and there were reasons that I can't tell anybody. And there's like a missing child and there's a character who's bleeding, like ominously, who's like, I touched my neck and I'm bleeding again. This one, I think it was nine pages, the first chapter, and it just gave a setup of this guy that she's been in love with at school, but over the summer she met a girl. And now that girl has arrived at her school. And we don't fully know what went down during the summer, but I think now she's gonna have to like decide between both of them because the guy, I think they were just friends and he wasn't interested in her prior, but now maybe he is. And there's gonna be a love triangle. I think naturally this will be just a nice reprieve between like the fantasy and horror stuff that I'm reading. The first chapter was well-written and everything intriguing. Like I think it's gonna be a fine read. I don't know if it'll, it would likely be a five star. Oh goodness. I'm so overwhelmed with the amount of information we just got in 14 pages. So we're following this vampire hunter named Remy um he's a bounty hunter but he might be half vampire himself like that's the rumor and his fellow like hunters hate him for some reason and he's just he just he got introduced to us as this just, like very badass guy and he was trying to hunt someone down and then there was like a bunch of vampires there and he was like who turned her what did you do? I'm gonna kill all of you. But there was also like a lot of background information on vampires and summer lords and a third court vampire. A lot of names of places and people and I, that was just, it was a lot. But I definitely feel good about all three of these right now. I'm gonna start with The Hunger then lighten it up with Cool for the Summer, and then Silver Under Nightfall. Good morning! I'm currently filming my book haul, which includes Book of the Month, which is just so wild. Seeing these little, like, coins, they call them, in the corner is just, I've never seen a Book of the Month book in real life, in person. So opening this little blue box, I didn't even know that was on it. 
It was just such a special moment today. I think my favorite thing about filming hauls, or no, just filming like videos where I talk about a bunch of horror and thriller books is like, I put on my cute cozy sweater and I curl my hair and I'm putting on my lip gloss and then I talk to you about murder for an hour. I just find it very funny. So now I have a pile of books I am gonna clean up, I promise, I will. But while I do that, I thought I should have an audiobook going because I always like to have an audiobook going at least like once in a vlog just because there are always times where I could be listening to something. And today that's while I clean. I'm just gonna be tidying up the house and like doing laundry. I also have to go to the library today. So while I do all those things, I'm just wondering if I should continue in the hunger, which I'm quite enjoying, or if I should listen to something else at the same time as the hunger. Actually, my question can be answered right now just by seeing which one is available and free either from my library or on script. If the hunger's on there, I'll give it a go. I'll see if I enjoy the audiobook. Okay, my library does have the hunger. Let's listen to a sample. June, 1846. To Charles Stanton, there was nothing like a good close shave. He stood that morning in front of the big mirror strapped to the side of James Reed's wagon. In every direction, the prairie unfurled like a blanket, occasionally rippled by wind. I feel like I recognize this narrator's voice. Oh my gosh, she did Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. She's also done a bunch of um, Shirley Jackson, which I feel like tracks. Her voice sounded like it would lend itself well to an old gothic book. So right now I'm like a fifth of the way in and we're still just getting like slow descriptions, which I enjoy, of the atmosphere. Um, the missing boy, I don't wanna spoil anything. That mystery has been solved, let's say. And I just feel like the descriptions of these people and what they're going through and them, you know, running out of food and them questioning other people in the party and like the people who might be in the surrounding area. It's all very well explained and described so far. Not a lot of action, but I wonder like at what point that's gonna kick off because like if it's supposed to be a story about this family who runs out of food and they start to eat each other, wouldn't that be like the end of the story because like the people are now dead and the story has to end? Is it gonna be like cannibals? Like they eat someone in their party and then from then they're like any person we encounter, dead. I don't know. I do not know the vibe of this. So I'm gonna keep reading. Okay, the audiobook is going really well. There's also this insertion of some letters written from some of the people traveling together and apart, like people who have left the group. And I'm finding that really interesting. Um, tensions are definitely mounting. Things are getting more intense, but it feels too early in the book still for like wild things to happen. Here's everything that I have to return to the library today. When I'm doing my quarterly updates, I often re-reserve like all of the books, as many as I can from the last couple months that I got from the library. So I'm just thinking through them now, like which ones do I want to purchase? I think the children's Bible is one of them. I really do want to purchase <laughs> Patricia Wants to Cuddle someday, um, but only if I see it like for like five dollars probably at the thrift store definitely gonna buy myself a copy of Jimmy Green. oh and I need to buy both of these eventually but I didn't like they were five stars but I don't love them so much that I think I'm gonna think about them all the time enough to buy them at their current oh my god $35 price tag yeah so I'm gonna go give all these back and then I have a bunch of things to pick up probably just this many yeah so I had just as many waiting for me. Unfortunately, every single one of these is something that I reserved anticipating the Goodreads Choice Awards in like a month, but I don't want to reveal to you my plans for that. So I just have a bag of books and hopefully many of my predictions I will get to read in the month of November. December. Who knows when the timing of the Goodreads Choice Awards is actually going to happen this year. If it's going to be the same as last year or if they're going to revert to like the regular one where people can write in votes. I really doubt it just because I don't know Goodreads to be a website that really takes people's um, suggestions and opinions and critiques. So I'm sure it actually took a lot of time and people like wanting there to not be write-ins for it to actually happen. So going back, I just, I don't predict that to happen, but I'm interested to see. Okay, I'm picking up my kid, gotta go home. I 
wonder if the fact that it's a new day and I'm not updating you until I finished the book, like does that give you an indication of my rating? I feel like it does. Unfortunately, this one did not do a lot for me. I typically don't like historical fiction to begin with, though that has been challenged the last couple years and I have enjoyed some things. But typically something pitched as a historical horror isn't something that makes me want to pick it up, but I'm glad that I did anyway. I'm going to give it a three overall. I think if you have knowledge of this historical event and alternate history does interest you already, like it's probably going to be a win. It did feel like a big character study for a lot of it. There are a lot of characters who kind of come in and out of the story meandering and you get a little bit of flashbacks from before they went on this trek um, what their lives looked like the secrets that some of them have and I think that is interesting context for how all these people got here and she also offers like explanations for maybe why the group was late in their takeoff how they ended up in this situation in the middle of winter in the middle of these mountains when they planned to be further along in the journey but then outside of that obviously it offers the alternative concept of something you know stalking them along their journey and this supernatural thing that's affecting them and that's like Amakatsu's thing she takes historical events time periods um and then adds a horror element so like with the titanic and this year her book set during world war ii which i do think is a really cool concept because it means that a lot of research has to be done and i think that's just fun to think about an author like really planning out their book and taking the time to like decide what accuracies to keep what theories to throw in and then adding this little extra element it's cool but it was also like a little bit boring and the things that we were focused on in the story wasn't always my favorites it was like there was all of these relationship dynamics and family dynamics and just a lot of like talking about the big strong man and the tiny little lady and how everyone was so attractive and it's not that that's flawed in any way but if i was looking for descriptions of really unsettling atmosphere I was reading that instead and if I wanted like really gory like went there extreme moments it didn't quite go there and it was doing this instead. As much as I feel like we got to know the characters I at no point felt like it was heart-wrenching or shocking at any moment which is the feelings that I, I guess I'm looking for. We definitely spent a lot of time talking about fear which is interesting. Um, the people concerned about what's happening. It's a very slow drawn out experience. And because of the time period and the people that we're following, there is also a lot of conversation about fearing Indians as they're referred to in the book and savages constantly, which obviously is like the accurate discrimination that would be going on um, and the fear of the indigenous people who might not want them there. And there were also moments in characters where those conversations were really challenged. Um, there was people who were interested in the indigenous communities and wanted to learn about the tribes. And we even had an indigenous character um, in the story as one of the like featured people um, talking about how this can't be, you know, an Indian curse and know they can't be responsible for the people in the party who've gone missing. The vampire story that I read from her called The Familiar's Assistant from Dark Stars was five stars. But then after reading from that anthology and planning this TBR, I read another short story from her in Other Terrors. Oh good, and I also gave that one four stars. So I think it's just the case that I prefer her writing in a short story format. So that was The Hunger. A little bit of a bummer because it was my 200th book and I wanted it to be five stars much like I wanted that for my 100th book of the year. My 100th book was but this one was not. Then I moved on to the palette cleanser cool for the summer. Good day friends. I might be in a jacket but I'm reading a book about summer so that's where my mind is at. This is a pretty short book even for a YA contemporary. 250 pages so I'll probably knock it out today. Uh, life update on my airy order. If you were here last time it's very important that I update you. I kept the jacket and I gave the sweater to my mom and then I ordered the sweater in a smaller size and I think I ordered another sweater with it and I really hope this one fits otherwise I'm gonna take the other one back from my mom and give her this one. I know you're all just very interested. Why am I look like I'm just about to rip my clothes off? I know you're all very interested in the update on my clothing. You've been anxiously awaiting. Oh, 
amazing amazing vibes see it's still oversized but it's not like as frumpy actually it doesn't look that different in size but my honest said it had Casey Becker vibes and I've never felt more joy should I try on the other one yeah I guess I don't have a book update so what else am I supposed to do here Ooh, cozy I'm obsessed with this okay ready for a transition why do I do these things to myself on the internet I think this one will look really good why can't you see me with jeans which you know it takes a lot for me to actually put on my body so I'm gonna curl my hair I'm gonna wear this I'm gonna read some of my book and I'll let you know how it goes I don't know what is up with me I just haven't been in the mood to do much this week like I'm feeling very low energy I'm officially exactly halfway through this so I thought I should update you before I finish it I really like the writing which shouldn't be a surprise because I've enjoyed all of her short stories that's very exciting I was wondering at the beginning if this was going to be kind of a Greece retelling because it had that idea of a girl like starting her school year and then a girl from summer is suddenly starting at her school when she's interested in this like other person and then like in the second chapter it used the phrase hopelessly devoted and I was like what are we doing here but no I think I think maybe like there are some nods to Greece intentionally, but it's definitely not a retelling in any way. I think there are a lot of conversations that are familiar in here, especially with like a queer coming of age story. Like if I come out with my, will my friends still accept me and all of those conversations. But there's also this really interesting thought um, that our main character had. She's talking about how she changed a lot over the summer, like her physical appearance. And now the guy that she's had a crush on is finally interested in her. And she's saying things like, well now i feel like i have to stay this way like i can't change anything about my appearance because what if like this is the person that he likes and if i dyed my hair or went tanning or whatever whatever like maybe he would stop liking me and i feel like that's a really interesting like subconscious thing that might happen to people that maybe i can find examples of in my own life it's like once somebody finally reciprocates feelings you're just like well I have to be like this perfect person that they expect me to be and it could potentially stunt you know your own growth and development as a person um from like just your personal you know fashion style evolving to like aspects to your personality it's going well and I'm gonna see you when I'm done I'm so glad this went well and it was the expected perfect palette cleanser that I wanted I think it's fun to still check in on YA sometimes and just see what's up in the age range because obviously it's so different than what was being published when I was a teenager like I never got this by rep and Greece is definitely mentioned as like an inspiration and in the marketing of this book so it's not too similar but you can see the references in general I really appreciated and enjoyed the pop culture references there was like the perfect amount of them that felt authentic to this like current teenage experience but weren't too much that like took over the plot which is what happens in some books that I read um, and if you know Dahlia Adler and her like passion and commitment to book lists and promoting books it felt really fun that Lara herself was kind of a part-time bookseller and got to recommend a bunch of books and got book recommendations like in various ways throughout this book because there are a couple books mentioned and graphic novels mentioned that are kind of under the radar a little underrated maybe that was fun to see them mentioned in here and what I liked about this the most I think is she's interested in two different people throughout the book and I like a kind of messy protagonist and messy relationships so I liked how you got to know both of the love interests and at no point did one of them switch into being like an asshole because that's something that happens in a lot of books is I feel like the author has to make us very clear on who like the main character is going to choose in the end and why and often the other person gets turned into like their real personality appears later in the book or something happens when they're like oh you thought we were perfect all along but actually we have all these issues that I just didn't bring up until this like last page when I decided to be with the other person. I find that a little bit cheap sometimes and not super genuine and this feels like 
super authentic experience where you are interested in two people at the same time. Maybe you're lucky if both of them are also interested in you and then it's just kind of a mess trying to navigate your own feelings. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four. I think if you like Becky Albertalli or if you liked um, Dress Codes for Small Towns, one of my absolute favorite, actually definitively my favorite YA contemporary book, um, where there again is multiple love interests and it's messy and that one is beautiful. I would say if you like these vibes, you should pick this up. And finally, after Cool for the Summer, I read Silver Under Nightfall. I also was simultaneously reading Ghost Lake, which is a short story collection from Nathan Adler, who I read and reread and still remained um, loving in here, if that makes sense. Okay, we've got all the primary colors represented today, thank goodness. Um, I'm reading Silver Under Nightfall. What did I spill on it? Today is a beautiful fall day. It was probably the hot chocolate I just had and the Halloween cookies. Today's perfect fall day is going to include going to the pumpkin patch and going to play tennis and going to get groceries but also I'm gonna go pick up a puzzle because I just feel like I need to do a puzzle. I just need to sit my candlelight and drink a hot tea and do a puzzle with my husband. Like that's the day that I need to have. I started this and I am overwhelmed. I'm 140 pages in and I think I'm also gonna read some short stories from this book of ghost stories in between reading this because it's very dense and it's very like, I don't know, unfamiliar to me. So we're following Remy, a kind of vampire hater. And there's this vampire, let's say vampire zombie kind of new strain of vampires going on. And what I like is there's a kind of a detective element of this. I love when you throw in some mystery into like the fantasy that I'm reading. So he's kind of tasked with tracking down like these vampires, figuring stuff out. And then he comes into contact with um, like a vampire couple and he gets brought into their little group and they're gonna work together. But also I think they're all gonna be a couple. I'm definitely not at that point yet. And in fact, I've struggled through the first like 100 pages. I think I'm getting into it more now. And I just went and looked on Goodreads and there's a couple of people who said like specifically at the 20%, the 25% mark is when they like really got into it. So that's where I'm at now because a lot of it was just, there were so many things to learn and there were so many unfamiliar terms and ideas you know, as is such with like an urban fantasy, paranormal kind of story. I am taking a break now though, to go to the pumpkin patch and read a ghosty story. Oh my God, I was just taking a little thumbnail. Look how beautiful these pages are. Wow, stunning. Yeah, so we went to the pumpkin patch and I really planned this whole B-roll montage, beautiful moment. And then I just didn't have the energy to do it. I didn't even show you the pumpkins we picked up. I think because I put my pumpkin, well, Rob put my pumpkin in the back of the vehicle and then didn't secure it. Like with this, like the whole thing was just open and my pumpkin started rolling around and it lost its little stem. Um, but this is the one that I picked. I always get the wartiest one. And then Rob, ow, <laughs> Rob picked out this one that just poked me. It's a little sugar pumpkin, I think it's called. And then Liam picked out the cutest pumpkin of all. We also got the puzzle and then didn't do the puzzle. I really just was not thriving mental health wise this week. Um, but this is the Cobble Hill Thousand Piece. I don't know what it's called, but it looks like this. Very not fall vibes, but there wasn't a lot of options, but I was really committed to picking up a puzzle. But I will say since doing this, um, I've actually started doing virtual puzzles. <laughs> while I listen to audiobooks and I've been loving it. If you have a website that you really like for puzzles, let me know because I found one, but I don't find that there's like that much good stuff, but I like the layout of it all and the way that it makes a clicking sound every time that the puzzle pieces go together. So I'll link that down below in case you're interested. Uh, but yeah, 
really need to redeem myself and my time that I planned to be cozy and joyful with the puzzle and my husband. So my bad. Back to vlogging Kayla though. Now I knew these weren't gonna all be ghost stories, but I was expecting the first one to be a ghost story. So when it wasn't, I got worried that none of them were gonna be ghost stories, but the second one very much was. So the first one was about kind of an arsonist guy and I gave it a three. I thought it was interesting. I feel like with some like analysis, I could have more takeaways for sure. Uh, the second story was like about a ghost and about a girl and protecting herself and um, avenging kind of what happened to her sister. It was very action packed, very violent. I thought it was really solid and also brought up a lot of really great conversations um, just about, you know, missing and murdered indigenous women and how it's such an epidemic um, that isn't taken seriously enough and law enforcement doesn't care enough. I did have plans to go back to the vampire story, but I think I'm just gonna read a little bit more of this tonight. This is one of those collections that I wish I could stay up all night and read because I'm really enjoying it and I wanna see if there are some connections, um, but I need to go to bed and I'll have to finish it tomorrow. But we've had a couple stories, I'm like halfway through now, that kind of link to other ones and i don't think that every story in here is supposed to have an equal impact um, some of them just give like a couple pages of context to like a little bit of history that was brought up in another story or like we just had a character who was referenced in another story they're not all tying together but they are obviously all around this ghost lake so like a lot of the people are in like the same family or they just like know each other and I want to see if there's more connections and if that continues and if there will be certain like reveals okay so the people were definitely right it took me that long to get invested and then I was fully invested still am fully invested almost done somebody asked in my last wrap-up what books I would most recommend to Rob and I could not think of anything from that wrap-up but this this is the shining example of something that I should get my husband to read. I do think that this should be a graphic novel. I also, at this point, am assuming that this is not a standalone or is intended not to be a standalone. Like I didn't see anything about this being a series, but there's no way this isn't the start of a series. I'm liking how much of the magical situation, the paranormal element is explained and also not explained. I like all of the characters. I think you're supposed to like. I like all of the conversations around consent, um, whether it be like just engaging in this romantic relationship in the first place, the discussions that go on, um, the clear lines that are being drawn and discussed, also like the sexual encounters themselves, and also like engaging in being a vampire, turning someone into a vampire, all the conversations that happen around that. Um, and when it's appropriate to turn someone into a vampire. And I just find Remy to be a fantastic character. Really well done. I think um, he is just very thoughtful and kind and naive in a certain way, but also very strong and capable and far more, should have much more confidence than he does and this couple this thruple this polyamorous situation he's getting into um the people in it care for him so much and they're giving him this confidence and they're making him aware of certain things that have happened in his past with other relationships um that weren't good for him but he didn't really realize in the moment and there's just this really nice idea that even though he has been you know left out from so much of society and so much of his own community um, but he still wants the best for everyone and wants to support people and doesn't want any harm to come to anyone and I just think it's a really nice perspective to read from and I already know I don't know what's gonna happen in these last 50 pages but I already know that I would read the sequel it's so wild to me when I read such a fantastically written fantasy book how it really puts into perspective how terrible some of the fantasy that I read is. It's just well written. I feel like objectively it's just a really well done story. I'm giving this I think a four and a half just because I was expecting a bit of 
an emotional response to the ending. I thought that there would be a little bit bigger of an impact overall. There were some really good reveals at the end that definitely set itself up for a series opener. Um, a lot of things were set up in here but there was still so much action and I think that's just because there were so many pages. This could have easily been a 300 page book where it felt just like a lot of setup and then the next book in the series was all the action but there was an equal amount of action it really took off and it was like brutal but also just really interesting following all of these characters and seeing what they were up to um tracking down the things that they were trying to solving some different mysteries um certain like revenge moments happened there was like the perfect amount of conflict between all of these people and there was also my favorite conversation surrounding like family expectations what you want to do versus what your family wants from you the idea in general of this virus plaguing the kingdom and changing um kind of what you come to know about the creatures so it's like you exist in this world where everything seems so clear and you have your specific role you know everything that's happening and then something slightly changes and you have all of these new responsibilities and things to learn and also having to change your perspective on what you think you know about other people that's that um i have read a couple more things from ghost lake but i still have to read all of the short stories from a universe of witches and by witches i mean wishes so i'll leave that for its own short story segment tomorrow. I never vlogged my final thoughts on this so now we'll get into all the short story stuff. Overall I'm giving this a four star. I thought it was really good. Had a lot of great conversations. I loved how the stories tied together. There were some specific like ghost stories and some that weren't. Um, the story that I did originally read in here was in here and embarrassingly I wasn't paying attention to the title and I was like three pages in before I was like I feel like I've read this before. Is this the same characters from a story I just read? No it was the same story that I just read. I thought it was really interesting learning about all of these characters and their relationships and this ghost like was really fascinating. The cosmology around all of it was cool and I would definitely recommend it. And then this is after sundown and the goal wasn't to read the entire thing in this week. I think maybe I'll finish it by the end of the month and give you a full review. But what I read in here is firstly, Ramsey Campbell, who I gave five stars in the Dark Stars anthology, has a story in here called Wherever You Look and I gave it three stars. It was about an author and hauntings and plagiarism and I thought it was interesting but it left me feeling very unsatisfied at the end. Then again from the Dark Stars anthology, John Langan, who I gave five stars, I read a short story from him in here called Alice's Rebellion, and I gave this one two stars. I said it wasn't for me, it was kind of an Alice in Wonderland retelling, um, which I just didn't love. And then there was also two authors in here that I've never read a short story from and I just wanted to, so that's CJ Tudor and Grady Hendrix, who I've read novels from but not short stories. Unfortunately, the CJ Tudor called Butterfly Island, I gave 3.5 stars. It was about a deadly butterfly island. Again, a little unsatisfying. And then the Grady Hendrix, I gave three stars. It was about um, a rich man and a Ouija board and it was action packed, but just not for me. It's hard for me to find the motivation to finish this, but hopefully as intended with short story collections, I will find something, you know, new authors that I love by the end. Then a completely different experience was A Universe of Wishes. Now I picked this up because there were, I think, four authors on my spreadsheet who I've given five stars to, I wanna say multiple times, they were in here. So I decided to pick this up. The first one is Crystal E. Kniza by Anna Marie McLemore, which I gave five stars. And it was a kind of retelling of Cinderella that was really fun. Then I read The Take Back Tango by Rebecca Roanhorse. So those are two authors that I've given some of the highest readings to in short stories. And I gave that one five stars. It was about like a sci-fi museum. Um, so it was kind of like futuristic other planet stuff but it very much had conversations about like stealing land and resources and then putting it on display in museums um, and like indigenous people taking it back. Then I read The Weight by Danielle Clayton, which I also gave five stars. 
Oh, this one was so interesting. It was a, a sci-fi story about, um, I actually don't really know the theme of A Universe of Wishes. I read the intro, it was very short. And I think it was just about like being the main character and taking power and making magical stories. I don't know, but Danielle Clayton was really interesting because it was kind of about uh, finding out if your true love is your true love. And two people would go when they would get their hearts um, taken out of their body and investigated and you could see like the names of people on someone's heart and if it was etched in really deeply like that was the love of your life um, sometimes the names would be scabbed over and that means that you are moving on from that love and I just thought that concept is really fascinating and I would read a full novel about it was it only three authors I only have three dog ears in here oh yeah because two authors in here um, their short stories were directly tied to like their other books and like other book universes and I didn't want to ruin my experience with that. And then I did end up reading the two Scott Lynch stories that were in here and I think I gave them both five stars which puts him now pretty high on the spreadsheet. So in Book of Swords his story is called The Smoke of Gold is Glory and this one was about a dragon's treasure and a group of people who were like working together to go get it and something that Scott Lynch does really well is he always has this like group of people who are working together. They're traveling together, they're learning together and it's just a really fun dynamic that he's building and there's also always something really fun that kicks off the adventure. So in this one what kicked off their trek was they were like having a kind of bet between each other at the local pub or whatever. And then in Book of Magic the story was at the very end and it's called The Rise, oh no, The Fall and Rise of the House of the Wizard Malkaril. Um, it was short, it was very interesting, and it was about a house that like got its own autonomy um, when the master of the house died. It was super fun and still managed to have like a group of people and a list of tasks to accomplish. I just really think that his build out of a story and pacing is really for me and I'm excited to pick up I think I'm gonna pick up a novel. So I don't know if that's kind of an unsatisfying way to leave this video is I read some more five stars, but I didn't like complete my journey with that author. And then I reread some stories and didn't like them as much. And then I read some stories from my favorite short story writers and didn't like some of them. Not that I think this feels like, or it needs to be a long spanning series on my channel, but there's definitely opportunity here for me to talk to you again um, and vlog my experience reading from a couple of these authors in the future. But yeah, as usual, got more in tune with my reading taste, read some interesting things, had a really good time, and I hope this vlog ended up being relatively cohesive with me interjecting my thoughts. And I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!